Hi, let's go through the external carotid and we'll look at the major branches of it. And shown on the slide, get yourself oriented, uh, there are posterior branches and there are anterior branches. So I've indicated that on the slide. And then moving from inferior to superior. So this is the maxillary artery. This is the end of it up here. So these are going to be terminal branches. Shown in the dashed line. And this is the superficial temporal. abbreviate artery throughout A, and we have parietal and frontal branches, of that. So that's the uh, sort of the termination, it's an extension if you will, of the external carotid. And then we have the maxillary artery that we'll spend a fair amount of time on. like an octopus, supplies all of the teeth, etc. But for right now, let's work on the branches of the external carotid. So we'll start with the common carotid. Artery, and you know that this is a carotid sinus. home of chemoreceptors and baroreceptors. And so this is the internal carotid. You know that that's going to the brain. No branches outside of the skull. Okay. So let's do the anterior branches first. So the first branch is the superior thyroid. We'll say a little bit more about each of these branches in a moment. So Going from inferior to superior, the first branch off of the external carotid is the superior thyroid artery. Next branch is the lingual artery. And in most people, it's separate from the facial artery, which is the third branch, third anterior branch. So superior thyroid, lingual, and facial. The posterior branches are the occipital artery, back of the skull, and the posterior auricular, around the back of the ear. Not, we don't do much with those. I'll abbreviate posterior as post auricular. artery. And that takes care of the two posterior branches. So five branches total. So let's go say a little bit more about each of those three anterior branches. Oh, um, another slide just to practice. Um, you should be able to identify a fair amount on this picture. Not everything has a box and a leader line going to it, but those that do, you should be able to identify. Some of these we haven't covered yet, such as the maxillary artery, and they don't really give you much room to write.
I stole this off the internet, but you can maybe reference it as a one and you know number them two three four etc and then somewhere else make a key number one equals blah 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 two equals blah 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 etc you can do that it's good practice but here are the branches that we were just doing so there is the sinus and there is the internal carotid that's been cut that's labeled so you know this is external there's the first branch which would be the superior thyroid, and then the lingual, and then the facial, etc. And the maxillary artery we haven't done, along with much of the rest of it. We've also done the occipital and the posterior auricular. There is the external auditory meatus. And the external carotid ends at the maxillary. So right there is the end of the external carotid. So it pretty much is that section. And the maxillary artery is not part of it. It's a terminal branch. So maybe I should have drawn that a little bit different. And I would put the dividing line right there. So that you have the superficial temporal and the maxillary as terminal branches. Okay, so good practice to fill in the blanks and identify arteries in these illustrations. Um, another picture for reference for practice. See how much of this you can identify. So, you know, you should be able to just start throwing darts at these illustrations and see what you can do. Recognizing what we haven't done and what we have done. So here are three branches off the external. And then you have a couple of posterior branches also. And this is going to be the maxillary artery. Which will be a subsequent lecture. Okay, moving on. Uh, more of same, different illustration. Uh, some of the uh, labels have been cut off, unfortunately. Um, but as you go through this, see if you can continue to identify these blood vessels. Just get used to it. And then there goes the internal. And then this one just kind of continues sneaking on around. Okay. Some of the labels are shown. Uh, some of them are cut off. But it's good practice just to familiarize yourself with identifying blood vessels. So, let's start with a superior thyroid artery. In addition to, superior, to supplying the thyroid gland itself, there are four major branches off of the superior thyroid that I'd like you to know. And I'm not going to ask you to necessarily identify these unless they're shown clearly in your textbook, but these branches uh, I don't believe are. But at any rate, there's an infrahyoid artery, and there's a sternocleidomastoid branch. That's pretty much a giveaway where that's going. Superior laryngeal, so the superior part of the larynx, and the cricothyroid. Hopefully, um, you remember where the cricoid cartilage is and the thyroid cartilage. So take a look at figure 6.3 and 6.5 in the book. But the superior thyroid is supplying structures uh, basically below the hyoid bone, including a number of the infrahyoid muscles. 
or parts of them. Could you still name the infrahyoid muscles? Could you still name an ID? Let's say ID and name. And I'll write a question mark. Can you still do that? If you're thinking about things to do for uh, preparing for the final exam, that wouldn't be a bad one. Okay, next slide. Moving up should be the lingual artery. And there are four branches of it also. And these branches supply the floor of the mouth, and many structures above the hyoid bone. Lingual artery. So the dorsal lingual and the deep lingual artery are supplying the tongue. The sublingual artery gives branches to the tongue as well, but it also supplies the sublingual salivary gland. So if you are asked to trace a drop of blood to the sublingual salivary gland, you would have to work it, If depending on where you're asked to start. Let's say you start in the left ventricle, you're going to have to work it up through the aorta. And then depending on whether you're going to the right or the left, you will have to go up to either the brachiocephalic artery on the right side or the left common carotid on the left side to get to the external carotid and then you would go to the lingual artery and then the sublingual artery to the submandibular or sublingual salivary gland. The sublingual artery also supplies the oral mucosa and the lingual periodontium and gingiva of the mandibular teeth. So that's relevant. And then there's a supra um, hyoid artery which supplies several of the suprahyoid muscles. Again, take a look at figure 6-5 in your book. I would have put those figures in the lectures, but I don't have access to the illustrations in the textbook. I'm working on that, but they haven't arrived yet. So the next branch of our three anterior is the facial. So there are several branches off of the facial. There's an ascending palatine artery and this is going to the soft palate. And there is a submental artery with branches that go to the submandibular salivary gland. So depending on which salivary gland you're going to, the submandibular or the sublingual, you have to choose your route to get there. If you're going to submandibular, it's submental. And there's an inferior and superior labial branches off of the facial. So going to the lips, lower and upper. And the facial artery, anastomosis with her, basically turns into the angular artery which projects up the side of the nose and basically terminates a little bit above the medial canthus of the eye. And that angular artery anastomoses with the infraorbital. And where the division is between the end of the facial and the start of the angular, I'm not concerned about. As long as you know that the facial artery crosses the face, good illustrations of it, and it terminates with the angular artery. And an anastomosis with the infraorbital. Okay, and again, take a look at the figures in the textbook. And then there are some decent illustrations. Again, for you to practice and see how many of these arteries that we've just talked about can you locate. And many of the labels on the right side of the diagram are still intact. So you can check. So see if you can find those branches that we just went through. Not all of them are shown. 
but it's good to spend some time again looking at these illustrations since we don't have models and it's all online anyway. And then another uh, picture of many of these major arterial branches of the head, neck, and structures that we'll be looking at. So again, practice, and I have some lists I made up of can you identify this. Okay? So spend some time looking at the illustrations, thinking about how you would trace a drop of blood to the upper lip or to the um, lingual gingiva of the tongue or to one of the salivary glands, for example. And I think that's it. Yes, and the next lecture we will do is the maxillary artery, which is shown in this picture. It's like an octopus, so it starts here. And then there's all kinds of branches that go off of it. It's going to supply the teeth and everything. So that's going to be a big one, the maxillary artery. So we'll do that next. See you soon. Bye.